Just four weeks later, many of the same women assembled just north of York for the 25-mile championship, promoted by the Yorkshire Ladies Cycling Association, who were celebrating their 40th anniversary. 85 women entered the event, but the Yorkshire Ladies added one poignant extra place to that total by leaving the number one spot on the start card blank in their own silent tribute to Beryl, one of their own. It was left, therefore, to North Midlands and Yorkshire Ladies official Christine Minto to get the championship underway. Behind her, Susan Carter of the WCRA, who was soon to catch the former 24-hour record holder. Timekeeper Dora Lindley organised the men's championship 50 in Yorkshire just four years ago, when her club, the Yorkshire Road Club, celebrated its centenary. Now we see her sending number six, Melissa Kitcher, the much-travelled pool wheeler, on her way. Next off on this stretch of the A19 up to Thirsk and back was Letchworth's Melanie Sears, although apologies for not starting had already come from two of the leading women, former 25 champion Sarah Phillips and the 1995 100 champion and BBAR runner-up Liz Milne. That's Cambridge triathlete Rachel Horn on her way. Behind her, Oundles Anne Wooldridge, whom we saw getting a team medal in the 10 earlier. The Oundles' biggest rivals here would surely be the Swaledale once again. Another triathlete, Michel Askey, was next off as the riders enjoyed a light tailwind out to the 13-mile turn at Thirsk. On now to VC York Sharon Lowther, seventh in the ten, she'd recently beaten the hour for the very first time and was to set an early target here with 1.053 on this far from flat Yorkshire course. Five minutes behind her, the 1993 BBAR Lee Lamont. Then with the Antelope, but now with VC Muiden, she was hoping to recapture former glories. And here we see her heading north and going well. In fact, she was to better Lowther by just 11 seconds at the turn, only to fall back on the tougher return journey. Her time eventually was 1-1-3, which put her ultimately in ninth place, just behind the Yorkshire rider. That's Beauvale's Liz Smith, heading for a 1-3-23. And this is 12 years old Kimberly Walsh, whom we saw briefly in the 10, her debut. Her parents promised her a set of tri bars if she beat evens that day, and here they are. Kimberly managed a 1.15.41 with them in this, her very first 25. Gaining ground rapidly on young Kimberly, though, was Arnold Zena Dighton. Destined to catch the youngest rider in the field just before the turn, Zena rode steadily throughout to clock 1.518 that would leave her down in 28th place, compared with 11th in 1995. And, as in the 10, she was destined to be fourth fastest of the Arundel squad. The other three had just set a new team competition record on the E72 seven days before. Catherine Essex of King's Lynn CC looked to be going well. A 1-2-32 and 13th place was her reward. Two racers and a tourist next, with Leicestershire's Ruth Elway about to catch Jean Pierce of Merseyside Wheelers. Pierce was to finish in a lowly 76th place, but Elway wasn't too far off the earlier leaders, clocking 29.43 at the turn to Lamont's 28.13. However, the headwind return trip took its toll, and she was to finish in 1.441. And here, Elway goes past the Merseysider as she enjoys the wind-assisted outward leg.
spectators of all kinds were out on the course, including Steve Brown there, East Bradford's soon-to-be Trike 25 record holder. Here at the start of the Easing World Bypass, he witnessed Ambrosia's Maria Lawrence catching Humbersider Paula McGowan. McGowan, a member of City Road Club Hull, went on to record a 1.10.40, but Lawrence was hoping for better than that fourth place in the 10. At the turn, she equaled the time of Lee Lamont and kept up the pressure on the return to take the lead with 1.043. But would a time outside the hour be good enough for a medal? Under the footbridge on the Easing World Bypass goes Colville Wheeler Louise King. She was heading for a time of 1.555, but was being overhauled by Jill Reams, hoping to lead Swaledale to the team title for a third year in a row. Reams was just 10 seconds slower than Lamont and Lawrence at the turn, but split them at the finish with a 1.048, just 5 seconds slower than leader Lawrence, but with several big hitters still to come. That's Askern's Margaret Allen, but the twice BAR winner was on her way to a modest 1541. Fast gaining ground on her was Twickenham's Jerry Derham. She'd clocked 2728 at the turn and a final time of 5938. The championship had its first under the hour ride and a new leader. Joan Threadgold of Burton Wheelers on her way to a 1-5-24. Behind her, the next of the defending team champions, Swaledale, Sue Parrott. Although she won a team medal with the Askern in the 50 of 1994, she hadn't yet got one with a new club, and here she was determined to put matters right. But competition for places, like with the Arundel, is strong, and her turn time of 28-57 slower than that of Reams, was open to a challenge from later starters Kim Staff and Anne Plant, as was her finishing time of 1.251. Not far behind her, Morley's Denise Burton Cole, daughter of Beryl, and now, believe it or not, a veteran. Surprisingly, Denise has only three team wins to show for all her great efforts over the years, two at this distance and one at 50, one in the 1970s when racing with her mother. Here she was destined to record a time of 1.428 for a modest 23rd place, but later she was to present the prizes. On her way to catching Denise before the finish was the surprise winner of the 10, Julia Freeman. The easterly rider was going very well here too. She was just three seconds down on Jenny Durham at the turn, but produced a strong finish to take the lead with 59.36. Could it be enough for a great double? Well, that was soon in real doubt as Marie Purvis flashed by. The North Wirral Velo woman had made a fast start and reached the turn in a sparkling time of 27.19 to take the lead from Lawrence and Lamont. This was the sort of form the Max rider was looking for just a few days before leaving for pre-Olympic training in America. Winner at 10 miles and 25 miles in 1992, Purvis faced the same tough return journey as all who'd gone before, but by the time she reached the line, only one second over 59 minutes had elapsed since she left the start. It was the best so far, but even as the gallery was taking this in, another time came in from the turn that of Andel's Maxine Johnson. The former 10 champion and multi-record holder had upped the ante still further with a time of 27.6. And there was still Purvis's clubmate Yvonne McGregor, the new competition record holder at this distance to come. That's a shot of Purvis taken at the turn. Little did she know of what was happening behind her at that point. Still at the turn, this is Askern's Katie Allen, but the former junior BAR was a bit off the pace here with a time of 29.12. It 
It was a good day for watching, but just standing there or sitting didn't make you realise how tough the headwind return was proving to be. This is Scarborough Paragon's Jill Taylor, but she was about to record a turn time of 31.39 and an eventual 1.10.4 for a lowly 61st place. Next we see the reigning BBAR Anne Plant reaching the turn in 28.38, the ninth best time so far, with Johnson and McGregor at that point still to get there. The Swaledale veteran was still searching for that bit of extra zip which gave her the 1995 BAR title. Behind her, Francis Harrison of the Bruff Wheelers. Just outside the half hour at the turn, the East Yorkshire rider, like many others, found it tough going on the way back and was to record a time of 1.628. Here's our first sighting of Maxine Johnson taking the lead with that halfway time of 27.6. Maxine's list of credits gets longer and longer. Apart from her 25 title of 1994 and that team victory for Aundel Velo in this year's 10, she now held individual records at 10 and 15 miles and team records at 15 and 25 miles. That last one just seven days before this title race in the South End and County Wheelers event on the E72 won by Yvonne McGregor in that tremendous new individual record of 51.50. Johnson did 54.11 to be second to McGregor there, but was that to be her fate again here? Meanwhile, Anne Plant was battling against the wind, although still with time for a brief smile at our camera, on her way to a 1.159 and an eventual 10th place. Here, Katie Allen has finally reeled in her minute woman, Kent Valley's Sharon Bianchi, halfway back to the finish. She'd gained just 32 seconds on arrival at the turn and must have had her in sight for some time. Apart from her bronze medal in the 1995 she's also won four team titles with the Ascan CC. However, there was destined to be no medal for her today, as she was to finish in 14th place with 1-2-45 and Swaledale were to prove much too strong for either Askern or Aundel Velo, with Kim Staff backing up Reams and Plant. Having said all of that though, Alan was still having problems getting away from Bianchi, who even had the nerve at one stage to come back past her. They were destined to finish together after quite a battle. Behind them, here's Johnson having a similar problem in overtaking New Brighton's Jenny Kershaw, herself a former team champion at this distance when with Liverpool Mercury in 1990 and at 100 miles when the Kershaw family made it a clean sweep in 1985 as members of Prescott Eagle. However, with Kershaw destined to clock 1-2-33, Johnson did eventually ease herself clear of the Merseysider and kept up a good pace into the wind over the last mile or so after the end of the Easing World Bypass to clock a great time of 59-5 but that meant she'd lost her halfway lead to Purvis and by now news of McGregor's turn time had reached headquarters. It was a super fast 25.47, a minute and a half faster than anyone else. Surely, barring accidents, Purvis and Johnson were going to have to settle for the minor medals. And indeed that was the case with the Bradford woman increasing her lead to a massive two and a half minutes at the line for a time of 56.25. It was the biggest winning margin at this distance since 1979 and her eighth individual title. It gave the North Wirral Velo a victorious 1-2 here in Yorkshire. A pity for them they had no third rider and merely emphasised their splendid form in their build-up to the Olympic Games.
defending the title successfully in a time of 56.25. Once again, the champion, and of course, just seven days ago, the new competition record holder, North Riddle Velo's very own world hour record holder and multi-champion, Yvonne McGregor. Well done to you all. 